Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so delighted today to be joined by writer, director, and actor Livia DePaulis to talk all about her feature film, The Lost Girls. And, and this film is an adaptation from Laurieann Fox's novel. And so I was really interested in the script writing process for you because with any novel, there's moments that really lend themselves to screen. You know, obviously there's a lot of visual storytelling elements within the book. Um, and then there's things that just don't translate as well. And so what was that journey of really kind of going into the weeds with the book and finding the things that worked as a direct translation and where you needed to kind of allow yourself that freedom of interpretation a little bit more. Yeah, so I completely underestimated the difficulties of adapting this novel, which is a very psychological, intellectual, literary piece of work, right? And so when I first read it, I thought, oh, it would make a beautiful film, you know, like, because it's very you know, Laurie is great and, and it really, really resonated with me. But then when I approached it to write it, I, I was just like, oh my God, where am I <laughs> there's just so much, right? There's just so much. The story is much longer. It takes a lot of terms that you just can't, you know, you can't fit it in a, you know, in an hour and a half. And also being in a way, it's it's a book about the power of imagination and it's a movie about many things amongst which the power of imagination. So, you know, you're trying to tell the story of something that's happening in the mind, right? Um, and so that's difficult. <laughs> that is difficult to, to, to translate. And I had to change certain things to make it more like, you know, easy to, to, you know, action-based, let's say it's not really an action-based film, but it's, it's, a uh, it's, a uh, yeah. So that it was more about actions and not so much about the thought process. Because the book, it's very much like about the thought process. And it's also so much a story about, you know, these multi-generations of, of women and, and to the point where we see four different generations of the same lineage um, on the female side. And it's really lovely to kind of watch the connective thread between them and some of the shared experiences that they have and how it influences and impacts them differently. And they're all their own characters. And yet, you know, with any family members, you know, you're always a product of your parents and, and things that you inhabit because of them genetically, because of the way that they raise you. And so how did you approach where you wanted the linear thread and the connection between each of these characters and some of the similar traits for them? Yeah, so that, you know, it became, it's in the book um, and it became very personal to me. It really got me to think about my own lineage, my, you know, the women in my family. And, um, and it was just, um, it, it became very intertwined, right? The book was the starting point and then it became very intertwined with my personal experience. And I took, you know, I took from, as I said, women in my family, and and I merged that my personal experience with the book, and it's very interesting because in the end, when Laurie saw the film, which is in a way very different from the book, <laughs> but she was like, "Oh my god, you really captured like exactly what I was, you know, what I was saying in the book, even though you did something different with the material." And I think that is, you know, that was uh, very um, fulfilling for me. And I think it was also very fulfilling for her to, to, to feel that her writing was really received, right? By another woman from a different country with a different background, different generation, different everything really. Um, but we really had this, we met, right? The, it's like almost as if the women in her family and the women in my family met <laughs> through our work, right? So yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. That's really wonderful to hear. And, you know, obviously in, in dealing with you know, a story where its genesis is is Peter Pan and, and J.M. Barry's writing, there's also an element of familiarity for the audience and, and they kind of come in with certain ideas of, of who some of the characters might be, what some of the moments might be. And you've, you've kind of like done this journey where 
there's certain lines that we're familiar with. There's certain details that we're familiar with. And yet it also tells the story in a very different way. And so how did you figure out where you really wanted to lean into the familiarity that the audience has and have those moments and, and allow that connection to exist and where it really needed to be something completely different for the story? Yeah, so that was, you know, that was one of uh, also the challenges of the film is that, you know, in order to be close to the story in a way, close to the, really the original story, you know, it's a literary piece of work. So the dialogue is kind of, you know, they speak, in, you know, Peter Pan speaks like Peter Pan, right? So that's 1900 type of dialogue. But then that was mixed with like, you know, pop references and, and more like modern, you know, even like the actor that plays Peter Pan, um, you know, I wrote a line where he says, is that's why, is that, is that why you don't dig her? And he was like, can I say, is that why you, you don't rate her? And I'm like, sure, <laughs> that's fine. I guess it's like, you know, like a new, new vocabulary, you know, new, new slang, but um, yeah, it's all kind of mixed together. Um, I, I, I think it was, uh, how can I say? I think it was kind of organic. Like the, the book was, there's already a lot of that in the book. There's already a melting of the classic tale and, um, and, and more like, you know, fun contemporary type of dialogue. Um, and then I, um, and then I just kind of went back to to, the, to Peter Pan at some point I, I felt the need to actually go back and really um, wrap the, the the contemporary tale around this container of the classic tale so the characters you know can be quite different um, but I don't think they are <laughs> it's just a different way of looking at them right it's just a different way of looking at them it is, and there's a lot of modernity to um, your character Wendy in this in this portrayal of the film as well in this particular story because, you know, she has that. Do I want to be a mother? Do I not? You know, when Peter Pan first shows up, she's like that's not what you're looking for is not who I am. You know, I live at a different time period. You know, he's kind of the one that's still <laughs> stuck in the past and, and very stagnant, which makes sense for him. Um, you know, were those elements of Wendy where she's questioning certain things about her life, about her relationship, about herself as a mother, was that very much kind of all elements which came from the book or were there added aspects that you really wanted to build in to flesh that out as well? So the book in the book, actually, there are like five generations of women. I tried. I tried to have five generations. Like, there was no producer that was going to do that. <laughs> I know, like, this is way too many women. It's confusing. This is too much. So, um, so obviously, things had to change, right? And in the story, in the book, um, let's say that teenage Wendy um, is... I mean, the book is a feminist book, right? It's it's kind of a very, you know, it's a very third wave feminist book. And um, and so, it, you know, obviously it raises that question. Why do you want me to come with you to be your mother? Like, this is, this is, this is, there's something wrong with this, right? <laughs> um, but in my case, you know, so that comes, that comes out when she's a teenager. But when Wendy grows up, um, it's more, again, it became more like a personal thing where I'm like, do, you know, do, I feel that uh, women are our generation, um, you know, are more, um, a less um, automatic into maternity. <laughs> Before it's kind of a given situation where you, you know, you, you just do it. Um, sooner or later, or it was like something that you were, you knew you wanted to do it. <laughs> you wouldn't question it. You knew you wanted to do it. And why wouldn't you? It's fine. It's a beautiful thing to do. But I feel like, you know, more and more, I have a lot of friends that are like, oh, I don't know, you know, like, I just don't know. Like there's, you know, besides global warming, <laughs> besides all the problems that are out there, um, it's also, and I think it's good. I think it's good that, 
you know, to question it and not just go into automatic pilot and be like, I'm just going to be a mother because that's what I, I want to and I'm supposed to want it. And I, I'm not I'm not aware of what exactly. And I, and I think that there's a lot of there have been a lot of women that maybe have had children without really questioning it. And there isn't such a strong, you know, not everyone has a maternal instinct, right? And not everyone is supposed to have a maternal instinct and, not, and it's not a mortal sin not to have it. Um, and so we have this Wendy who it's a woman that, you know, maybe because this thing just kind of happened to her, maybe because she hasn't really explore her um, youth uh, the way she wanted to. Um, she, she has a daughter, but she still, I mean, let's say one of the questions that the movie kind of, that, that, that I, you know, put on top of the page when I was writing, it was like, how can I be a mother if my mother, if I don't have a role model for that, if I haven't learned that from my own mother, right? So that is, because um, because my my the character I play Wendy has something in common with Peter Pan. Both of them are children without a mother. And so then, how does that become? Um, how do you become a mother if you haven't had that model? That that's one of the questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, that's, that's a really interesting question and, and completely makes sense with that commonality. And one of the other challenges in, in telling this story is, is the tone of the film as well, because you're telling a story about, you know, the emotional grounded aspect between these women in this family. And then at the same time, there is a fantastical element. You know, what does that look like when Peter shows up? You know, what does it look like when, you know, Wendy goes flying with him and, and all of those elements. And so how did you balance those two very different tones in into a linear space with one another. Right, <laughs> that was a challenge. And uh, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, I, I love that challenge, you know, I love that challenge. And also it was done, um, you know, this is a independent film done on a fairly low budget. <laughs> so it wasn't, you know, the easiest thing to do to, 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 to make it smooth, right? Um, but I'd say it's like a little bit like um, the logic that you find uh, in dreams, right? Where everything is normal, everything is normal, and all of a sudden you're like, wait, but this was a dog and now it's a cat, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so so it's, um, there is a bit of an element of surprise, which is kind of quirky. Uh, but I do like that. So, and I, you know, you, you'll have to watch the film. <laughs> but yeah, that that was uh, that was, uh, and I think again in the writing, um, because the script was still quite descriptive and and used an imaginative language. Um, once we then got into the editing room, I was like, oh no, how am I going to make this work? <laughs> but it worked in the end, I'm very happy with it. But yeah. <laughs> And in, in directing as well, when you do have those moments where, you know, Peter shows up and maybe he's there, but maybe she's just having a conversation with him that she's considering in her mind as she's discussing certain things out in a field, you know, there's the visual aspect of what that looks like. And that's very different to when Hook keeps showing up because that's a very different presence when he shows up in her mind um, to when Peter does. And so how did you come up with the visual language of what these moments would be where these characters show up in the real world for? her um, and have this fantasy element but in very different ways yeah so I'd say that when um when when Peter and Hook show up in her childhood it's all pretty real right it looks like she's in a different place and she is, you know, and he shows up in the room like Peter Pan. <laughs> you know, there's the shadow, like, it's like Peter Pan. Um, and Hook is like Hook. Um, although they're, you know, both characters are 
you know, different from the fantastical adventures in Neverland, because it's again, a little bit more psychological interpretation of these characters, right? So then when they show up in her, in her world, then it becomes kind of a little like a, um, a hallucinogen, <laughs> right? A little bit like, okay, is this, is this happening or not happening, right? So it's a little bit, uh, visually, it's more, um, you know, we use different lenses and it, it, it has a very different feel. Um, also because, you know, these things, the ideas that these things that, you know, really make you fly, make your imagination fly when you're, when you're a child, uh, if they persist in your life as an adult, uh, they tend to be a distortion of your reality and they might create a problem in your, in your, um, you know, in your process of development as a, as a human being and as a woman, right? Yep, absolutely. And, and on a separate note, I also wanted to talk about working with the cast. I mean, you've got a really, really wonderful cast in this film and, and you're working alongside them as a scene partner, as well as directing them. And you also, you know, bring such a wealth of experience from your own acting career in the communication that you have and, and kind of really knowing exactly the language to speak to them in. What is it that you're asking from a scene, you know, knowing exactly what it's going to take to get to a certain emotional landscape for someone in their performance. Um, and so what was that, that language and communication and style that you wanted to have in your approach and the way that you worked with your cast as a director as well as a scene partner? Um, I think that working with actors is what I enjoy the most, <laughs> um, really, and, and, and what I feel the most confident uh, with in, you know, in my directing. Um, I'm an actor's director. <laughs> I think we can say that. And... Um, I think actors in my, so I took a ridiculous amount of uh, acting classes in my life, <laughs> just because I had a real like love for the craft. And, um, and so I learned over the years that I think different actors need different things. And so it's a matter of figuring out what, what, every actor needs right because certain people need to be you know need an approach that's more intellectual and you just can say you know this is what happened before this is what's going to happen afterwards and this is where you are some people you know like how are you going to direct like Vanessa Redgrave this is like a giant you know <laughs> Hades you know like you know acting like properly acting like remembering your lines and actually acting and I was just in awe there right so I do like to take some, um, you know, to have a conversation and see what, what, they, what, what they feel, especially with this type of material, right? You have Vanessa Redgrave and you have a Peter Pan and she's, she's playing the original Wendy Darling, who's now an old lady. I mean, she's going to know something about that character more than, than I do, right? Um, so, so obviously taking some inputs from them. Um, and then there's a point where you have to be like, no, but this is a complex story and I need to kind of get what I need, <laughs> you know? Um, but I feel like it's been very organic. And then with the young actors, it's also a real, real pleasure for me to work with young actors. I really love it. And uh, cause they're so, you know, they just want to give it all. <laughs> they really want to play. And, um, and it's great. It was just great. Um, and as I said, different, you know, different actors, different needs, right? Some, some people need more attention. Some people need less attention. Some people need to be more like guided. Some people need to be left alone. It's just different different uh, and especially with an ensemble piece you really you know and and in the midst of all of this then there's me <laughs> so so uh, but, but I, I feel that um, you know I tended to do the work with the actors before you actually get to shoot the scene right it's not um, if I give notes during the scene like while we're shooting the scene it's more like like a theater director would do, like, can you just look that way or look that way instead of that way? Like very technical things. Uh, the more, um, 
you know, emotional or motivational um, notes would, would get discussed before. And, you know, you mentioned your own performance as well, and it must really change the trajectory of the way that you're developing and preparing your own performance and character, because, you know, you've been through this extensive research process, writing the script, pre-production as a director by the time you're shooting your first scenes. Um, And so did you find that there was a real genesis of your character development process that just kind of naturally was happening by osmosis with the amount of time that you were spending with the material versus having to kind of sit with the pages as much and, and kind of go through backstory? No, no, it's 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 more the other way around. I think yeah. uh, work sh- kind of workshopping the character yeah. um, informed the writing. It, it kind yeah. of kind of came together. You know, I started working on this thing again. I took it and <laughs> an insane, like ridiculous amount of acting classes. So I would go to these workshops and I would take a couple of scenes, and we're talking like uh, 2016, right? So I would like workshop a couple of scenes from The Lost Girls written by me uh, (laughs) for, I don't know, like three months at a time, right? And with actors, like with, you know, scene partners, just, um, and through that, and then do like some kind of typical acting exercises and, you know, just, just, um, just doing that. And then with that, I would go back to the script and and be like okay this is this is the truth of this moment um so the script has to work for this <laughs> this is what i'm trying to say it's also like clarifying as i said like it, that's why it's so like more personal clarifying what is it that's that's what is it that is moving you to to to, to examine this this type of material which is you know intimate and and uh and personal it's almost like two layers right there's like the the core more emotional personal intimate stuff and then there's a layer that's like okay no but i'm also talking about this women and i'm talking about women and i'm talking about girls and i'm talking about this and like, you know, like there's a there's the intellectual side and the more like um, emotional, heartfelt, um, personal stuff, stuff. No, that's, that's so interesting to hear. And it's really great hearing all of these details. Thank you so much for sharing all of this about the film, Livia. I really appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs)